You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again, and today we have a special guest. We are going to have a special topic. We're going to talk about the four-letter word that is going to rock your world is all about love. But first and foremost, we're going to learn about our guest. She's a speaker, she's an author, and she's a lover of people. And she is really into black liquors. So we're going to learn about that story as well. So first and foremost, we have Kim Sorrell here. She has a book that we also dive into a little bit later in the show, Love Is. First and foremost, I want to welcome you, Kim, to the show and say, how are you doing? I am doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I love your show. Everyone should listen to it. And so I really appreciate being here. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So first and foremost, uh, you as an author and a speaker, man, give us a little backstory how you got inspired to dive into that path. What, what made you say, you know what, I want to give this a shot? Sure. Well, I am an entrepreneur as well. I started my first business right out of high school and I've had businesses my whole life. And I... Uh, a few years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And four months later, my husband was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and died six weeks after that. Uh, and during that time, I wrote my first book, Cry Until You Laugh, because there wasn't anything out there to tell me about what to expect. And then I was writing still when my husband was diagnosed and losing him. And so it was just a very crazy time. And then my second book, I questioned the true meaning of love after losing my husband. I wanted to know, am I doing love right? It seems to be this age old question, you know, what is love really? And so I dedicated a full year to figuring it out and I found it. And when you found it, I mean, what, what was it like to be able if, if this is the right word, a word, heal, what's the healing process behind that? Um, what was it like for you to be able to not just pick up the pieces and, and, and live your life, continue to live your life, but also to continue to thrive and, and set goals and reach new goals? I think a couple of things. I love my husband so much. We had a great relationship. So I'm very grateful for that. But I don't have big regrets uh, that we lived life. We, we did it. Our kids are great. And um, we really had it good. I didn't like him putting his socks on the bathroom floor and not in the hamper. But other than that, things were pretty good. And so losing him was really tough. And I was still going through medical stuff myself, but getting through that just fine. And then trying to figure out this whole new life, this whole new unexpected life. And so I, uh, when I was physically able to go back to work, I happened to run into a man who was running an organization that my father and I had started 10 years before. And I said, hey, do you need any help? You know, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. And I wasn't sure if I was going back into my businesses. I had people running them. and so. Not sure what to do. And uh, he said, yeah, yeah. What about bookkeeping? And I'm like, sure. So I became part-time bookkeeper. And then 12 days later, there was an earthquake in Haiti that killed 200,000 people. So within a couple of weeks, I was in Haiti working. And I really believe that that is the healing magic is service. When you serve other people, you get out of yourself, you get out of your own head and your heart opens up and your mind opens up to to things that you didn't know before. And and service is just an incredible way to heal grief. And you are a director of a humanitarian organization. What is that organization's uh, name and and what has that helped you? Or excuse me, how has that helped you continue to to share the love and joy for, for people. Rays of Hope International is the name of the organization. We're a partnering organization working with people in their own country that have a passion and mission and vision to help people in their own country. And they understand the true need. They understand the culture. They understand 
uh, the language and they just need somebody to walk alongside. And uh, being able to be a part of this organization as well as helping out other organizations keeps me uh, in line. You know, it, it keeps my focus clear. It helps me to know that the world can be a better place and that if everybody does their part, the world will be a better place. And through all of this, by the way, we are listening to Army Focus Radio, talking to our guest today, Kim Sorrell. When you look at your journey so far from the time of tragedy to you healing and giving back to the community and, and being light in this world. What does love mean to you personally now that you've been through all of this? What does it mean for you personally? Well, you know, this is what I discovered is that love is not an emotion like excitement or fear. Love is something that you are. Love is walking, talking, living, breathing, giving. It's, it's who you are. It's who you can be to other people. And with love, it, there is complete freedom, complete freedom, because there's no room for judgment. There's no room for condemnation, no room for racism. There's no room for discrimination. There is just love, period. And it's your only job. It's all you have to do is love people. And what a beautiful thing that is. So we don't have to fix anybody. And that allows us to just love people for who they are and let people live who they believe they're created to be without trying to fix them, without condemning them in any way or or judging them in any way, but just loving. It's the freest you can be is to just love. And with your book, you have a book that you had, excuse me, that, that you had published. It's called Love Is... And it's based on 1 Corinthians 13. If, if you can uh, tell us a little bit the, the backstory of the book and, and what was the core thing that you were hoping that readers would be able to take away from it. Yeah, so I, I used 1 Corinthians 13, the, the thing that you hear at so many weddings, right? Love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, does not boast, etc. And we hear it and our eyes kind of glaze over because we hear it so often. But I decided I would take that as, and use it as a roadmap and take one word a month and discover, well, what is love that is patient? What is love that is kind? And I quickly discovered that there are 14 is's and isn'ts of love in the chapter. So it took me a little bit longer than a year, but I got it done. And each month, it took me so much each month. Like I thought I knew it seemed like it was going to be so simple, right? Like patience. We all know what patience is. You're not mad because you're ready to go. They're not ready to go. You're not honking your horn in traffic, whatever it is, you're showing patience. But I discovered that you put love is or love is not in front of any word and it changes the meaning. So like love is patient right out of the gate. The very first month I discovered that what that means is that you love whoever you're with. I just believe you're supposed to love everybody. You love whoever it is that you're with enough to recognize that this is the most important moment of your life. What's in the past is in the past and what's in the future is yet to come. This is the moment, a moment that's going to come and go with or without you. But to show love that is patient, you are fully engaged and completely present. And I have to tell you, this has taken me a lot of practice because I thought I was the grand multitasker. I could think about a meeting I had later, getting a kid to a soccer game, you know, whatever it was, and be fully engaged at the same time. And it's impossible. To be fully engaged is just that, not thinking ahead, not thinking behind, but really focusing. And when you do that, It's incredible what happens because you hear things in a whole different way. You don't make assumptions about what you're hearing. And you're not just waiting with your rebuttal, but you're actually hearing what whoever it is you're with has to say. And that is love that is patient. Listen to our Focus Radio talking to our guest for today, Kim Sorrell. And you mentioned earlier how you have multiple businesses. And how has... Well, I should ask this. 
Has anything changed how you operated your businesses ever since you came out with the book and you have done all these things for the community, trying to help people understand, you know, transformation of of this word love. Have you found uh, any difference in how you operate your businesses? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I really listen to people. And that's just one of the love is is right? One of the 14. But that has changed things. That's that's changed things dramatically. The relationships that I have with people that work for me. And uh, so many things about love. You know, it can be easy to think that love is just for couples or it's just for family or it's just for family and friends. But it's not something that you hang in the closet when you get to the office. Love is with you always. Again, it's, it's walking and talking is who you are. And so you don't not give it to the people that you work with and, and customers. Like um, when you're authentic and you truly care about people, you truly love them. It shows, it shows. And people want to work for you and people want to buy from you. So love has made a big difference. And with today's world, it's a lot of distractions with what people see on social media and movies, TVs, you know, we, we have influences, if you will, of maybe choosing who we want, you know, to love more or love less or not at all. Uh, how much of, of, of that is, is a, is a burden based on what you've seen with your life and, and how does your book and also your practices help counter that, that issue? That is, that's such a great question. And it's so true. You know, people will say, well, I love everybody, but those darn Republicans or I love everybody, but those Democrats, right? Like we put labels on people and single them out and say, well, because they belong to this, we don't want anything to do with them. Well, we're just people. Everyone is an individual. You know, you think about the Mona Lisa. And if it went up for auction, how much money, how many millions and millions of dollars? I, I don't even know. But it's because it's a one of a kind. It's, it's one of a kind. It's a true work of art that is one of a kind. Just like you are. Just like I am. There is nobody that will be exactly like you again ever. There's nobody that has ever been exactly like you. You are one of a kind. So how valuable is each person? And when you recognize the value of each person, it's easier to love them and realize, well, you know, that might be their politics or that might be the things they they believe in or whatever, but it's not who they are. You know, hopefully we're so much more than our politics. Hopefully we're so much more than the labels that people put on us. When we stop labeling people and just love them, that's when the world starts to change. And once again, mentioning the book that you wrote, you you mentioned that uh, 1 Corinthians 13 is a roadmap. And when people read Love Is and learning, not just from your perspective, but using your faith as a guide, why do people, not why, um, why should people be open-minded to the option to love? Because there's some people who say, uh, you don't know what I've been through and there's probably a good reason why I'm not open to that. What would you say to a person like that? That it starts with you. You know, you, you have to love yourself. You have to love yourself and, and in faith. So if somebody were to uh, make an apple pie and give it to you and not just make an apple pie, but the best greatest apple pie that has ever been made. And not just made the apple pie, but made the tree that made the apples to put in the pie and made the soil that made the tree that made the apples to put in the pie. And you reject it and you say, no, I don't want it. That would be foolish. That would, you wouldn't do that. You'd say, yes, I want it. Well, that's what you are. You're this, this beautiful, wonderfully created in God's image person. And so accept who you are and, 
and love who you are. Because if you don't love who you are, it's awful hard to love other people. So love who you are. We're, we're all different. We all have different body shapes, different skin tones, different whatever. But that's the beauty. That's the beauty of it. I like myself. But man, if the world was full of all me, I would drive myself crazy. Like that would not be a world I'd want to live in. It's wonderful that we all have different gifts, different talents, different ideas. Where we can have different opinions. We can all think and act differently. That's, that's a good thing. And look differently. That's a good thing. That just needs to be embraced. So embrace yourself and love yourself first. And then you can love others. And speaking of that, you mentioned earlier in this interview how you visited uh, uh, Haiti. Uh, what was that experience like? And you you mentioned in the book a chapter about this. Um, what are some of the things that you explore in that chapter when you're uh, when you wrote this for the reader? Well, pretty much all of the book takes place in Haiti almost all of it. And uh, so that's where I, I was when I was trying to figure out love. And it, and it sure changed things. Haiti is the poorest country in the Western hemisphere. The average Haitian lives on less than $2 a day. You know, the average American probably throws away $2 worth of groceries a day, you know, from the, that have rotted in the refrigerator or whatever, right? Or waste water, the things that, that we take for granted that are not available in Haiti, like running water, clean water and electricity and so much that's not available to most people that live in Haiti. And so writing it there and living there and working things out in my head and discovering things made, uh, made it so much easier, I think, and harder both because um, there's not the distractions, with no power, there's no TV. <laughs> so there's, there's not the distractions that can so easily be here in the U.S. And so that part of it uh, helped me to really focus. But at the same time, I, you know, was showering with a bucket of water a lot of the times, or I didn't always have food uh, when I was hungry, uh, even though it might, I, you know, the money to buy, it might not be available where I was. And so, uh, and slept on the ground. I got chased by a motorcycle gang. I got lost on a mountain. Like a, a lot of crazy things happened to me. And I tell those stories. It, Love is, isn't a unicorns and rainbows kind of a book. It's the, the real stories of what happened that led me to the discoveries that I made. Sounds like despite the challenges love still prevails always yeah love wins right and when you see what you're able to do now you, you've been on many other shows as well sharing your your story and, and your book and the message what has the experience been like to see your influence continue to grow and how has that uh made you look at your process as far as where you are as a business person and humanitarian? Well, love, love is everything. Love is universal. Love is for everyone. And uh, so it's been interesting because I've heard from couples that have read the book together and their marriage was saved. I've heard from families who have given all of their adult children a copy of the book and then they get together once a month on Zoom because they're located all over the world. And so they uh, or all over the country, wherever. And so they get together once a month on on Zoom and talk about a chapter and and what it's done in families and what it's done for them as parents and and uh, siblings and, and everything else. And um, church groups that are doing it, small groups that are doing it, um, businesses that are buying a copy for everyone that works for them. And then um, even having meetings and discussing it and seeing just what happens within the office, what happens within the company, things that change. And so uh, this was life-changing for me, the things that I found out. Because the things that we know about love, 
we've been taught and, and we haven't all been taught the right thing. There are so many things done in the name of love that are not love. And there's so many things said in the name of love that are not love. And so to really discover what true love is has to change your life like it did mine. And when we talk about your faith, how has your faith really keep you anchored as far as not staring away from what you believe in? And in this case, love. How has faith helped you stay anchored in that? I think that this has increased my faith all the more. Like it drawn me closer, realizing how great God is. In John, it says that God is love. Not that God loves, but God is love. So just like we can be love to others, that's what God is to us. And when you really understand love and what love really is to think that that's what God is, man, who wouldn't want to? be closer to a God of love. Once again, you listen to Army Focus Radio talking to our guest, Kim Sorrell, and you go to her, her website. She has a website, kimsorrell.com. You also get her, her book, Love Is, is available anywhere you get a book. Amazon is a very popular spot. You can go there. And you, on your website, when people uh, visit there, you, you have a tab that is interesting, Love Challenge. If you can, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's a 14-day love challenge. So there's 14 is is an instance of love in 1 Corinthians 13. And so each day, it's just a little challenge. Uh, Just read a little bit. It's just a, a short challenge on really thinking about that aspect of love in that day. And if you sign up for it, I will send you for free a WWLD, What Would Love Do? wristband. And uh, because I believe if you can answer any question that way, what would love do? You're going to be making the right choices and doing the right things. That's clever. That's that's pretty clever. That's that's nice, man. If someone wanted to just buy some, are they able to do that as well? Or would they have to? Sure. Write, yeah. Write if they want to email me and uh, on my website or contact me through my website or email me at Kim at Kim Sorrell. Dot com. You can get to my website too, um, loveis.info, because my last name is too many letters. It's two R's, two E's, two L's. <laughs> it's hard to remember S O R R E L L E, yeah. even though I'm literally the only Kim Sorrell spelled that way in the entire world. Uh, it can be a lot to remember, but loveis.info will bring you to my website and there's a contact me tab, and you can contact me anytime. I'd love to hear from people. and. Love to help people out any way I can. You also have a shop. People can get t-shirts and uh, you have spiral notebooks that they can check out. When you see the impact of the people that you had on with this book and also with just your mission, what do you hope people uh, will continue to do after reading your book and after meeting you, what do you hope that they do after after it's all said and done? When it's their turn to share love? Well, I hope that they learn what love really is and want to live that way and want to love that way. And that they they stop with the labels, that, that we put the labels away. And I, I hope that people just recognize the beauty in each other. And, and every single one, realizing we have no control over anybody but ourselves, but we do have control of ourselves and the way we love and the way we treat people. And to, to love everybody and treat people with love is the greatest way to live. That's, that's good. I'll say WWLD. That's right. I'll put that there because I think that's a really, uh, that's a cool way of looking at things because I think you're right if you ask that question if you're asking from an honest spot you most likely be leaning towards the right answer Mm -hmm. so true so true 
Once again, listen to Army Focus Radio, talking to our guest, Kim Sorrell. She is a business owner, author, speaker, and she is also a lover of black licorice. I wasn't going to end the show without asking you, do you really like black licorice? What's the story behind that? Yeah, I really do. I really do. And most people don't, I think. I think it's more rare to find someone who likes black licorice than not. But uh, to me, it's... um, I do really like black licorice and I think I like it mostly because my aunt Rita, one of my favorite people ever in my life, um, who's now gone, she had a home for um, old people and I loved to go there. I loved working with her and helping her. And she always had black licorice in her pantry. And so I started eating black licorice when I was, I don't know, three or four years old, probably. And I uh, have ever since. That's awesome. Well, once again, I want to say uh, thanks to Kim for not just being on the show, but sharing her story. Make sure you get her book. It is available on Amazon. Love is you want to check it out. And also visit her website, uh, KimSorrell.com. She has a store where you can buy some shirts. And also, if you go to the challenge page, the Love Challenge registration page, you can... Uh, get a risk a wristband. So don't forget about that W W L D. That's 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 a perfect. Uh, I want one now. So that's pretty cool. Once again, I want to say uh, thank you, Kim, for being on the show today. But what will be a call to action you want our listeners to take outside of uh, getting your book? Yeah. Well, it, right. Uh, you know, I've done your homework for you. You don't have to go to like, Haiti and live for a year to figure out love. <laughs> I've done it for you. But I would say the the thing to do is really think about it. Think about, you know, when are you putting people in a box? When are you uh, discriminating in whatever way because of politics, because of religion, because of uh, where somebody is from? You know, when when do you call out people as a they instead of by their name and and drop it, drop it and just love people? Once again, we're talking to our guest today, uh, Kim Sorrell. You can go to her website, KimSorrell.com, and sign up for the Love Challenge registration. It's not hard. It's real simple, real easy. You get a nice wristband, and go check out her book on Amazon, Love Is. I want to say thank you again, Kim, for taking time and schedule talking to Army Focus Radio today. Thank you so much for having me.